What is up guys? Welcome to the Computer Information Highway. We are here for your Java programming tutorial number 20 and we're going to be continuing with our program from before. If you remember last time we created this array called grades. It's a, char it's a character array and we defined the length to be num classes which I was telling you is dynamic because we are getting the input from the user and it allows us to create or it allows the length of this to change uh, depending on what the user enters rather than having just say like a number six um, <coughs> so what we're going to do from here on is we're going to be populating this array and we might do a couple other things afterwards it depends on how much time we have and if I can get to it all so I'm just going to go ahead and start jumping into it so in order to populate this array we need to go through every every instance of this uh, array and normally with an array you can do grade of or sorry grades of one actually I should probably tell you this first alright so whenever you are uh, trying to pull out a certain value from a array, you have to tell it what index it is, or what position it is, and that's what this does right here. This is going to tell us that we're going to be getting the value of grades at index uh, at index 0. And I don't know if I mentioned, to you, mentioned it to you guys earlier, I probably did with for loops, but computers generally start off at zero so in this kind of situation the first index of grades is zero it's not one so rather than let's say we have uh, if we were to have five if we were to have five indexes the fifth index would actually be uh, four because we're starting at zero zero is going to be our first index um, and if we count zero as a number that zero uh, would be one and then two would be uh, er, and then 1 would be 2, and then 2 would be 3, and then 3 would be 4, and then 4 would actually be all 5 of them. So, so we can do that, and we're just able to, uh, we're just able to, like, set a variable, and we can also do this the other way around. So we can set grades of 0 uh, equal to A. And if I didn't mention it before, the single, uh, these, these single quotation marks are how you denote a character versus a string. So if we were to do that, this wouldn't work because this is saying it's a string and it's asking for a character. It even says right here, string cannot be converted to character. So we use these uh, single quotation marks in order to uh, represent a character. So this is, yeah. <laughs> Alright, so that's how we can set set the value of this index, this variable at this index to a value. So grades of 0 is going to be equal to A. So what we can do instead of this, rather than assigning it one by one and having to put it in ourselves, we want the user, we want the person that's using this program to be able to uh, input their own numbers. So, to do that, we would want a for loop. <coughs> so we can use for. We're going to create a variable in x. We're going to set equal to 0. We're going to increment, or we want x to be, we, alright, so the length, so the length of this, of this uh, variable grades is equal to num classes. If we were just saying it was 6, hypothetically. Um, grades, the length of grades would be 6, even though the index for the 6th, uh, for the 6th item, I guess, even though the index for the 6th item is 5. So we still have a length of 6, and we're never actually going to use 6, which is why we're using less than right here. It's always going to go up to 5, so we want that to be less than num classes, because it's going to be based off of how many we have right here. Oops. 
All right. So I'm just going to go through this real quick one more time. We're creating a for loop. We want the for loop to go from 0 to uh, the number of classes that we have a minus 1. Uh, yeah, the number of classes that we have minus 1. So this is going to be going from 0 to 5. Um, and that's so that we can store the variable of grades in here. So I'm going to show you right here. So if we do grades of x, because we're setting the we're setting the index, and since the index is changing, this allows us to populate the entire array with just this one for loop. As long as what we're doing in here is going to happen uh, consistently for the next couple of iterations. <coughs> So we could set grades of x equal to, let's just say a for now. So even though we can fill up all of them in a dynamic way, and even though we can set a dynamic length of this, we haven't quite set what this is. And in order to, in order for the user to be able to put it in, we would have to create another scanner object. And normally, um, the scanner here we would be doing uh, normally you would want the scanner to be within the same scope of what you're working uh, and in this case I'm not going to do that just so that I can show you um, what we're going to be doing with it so I, I, I want you guys to realize that scanner is an object alright so scanner is an object um, which is just like saying it's an int or char except it has some more properties to it um, that you really don't need to worry it has a couple methods in there which is just like some functions that work through this class or through this object and you don't you're not limited to just like integers characters and chars in here we can pass in objects so if we have uh, if we have this scanner in up here and we're trying to pass it in if we're trying to pass in that int we can create another scanner in here and make sure that our function respects it respects the arguments needed we can just pass an int be in because that was the same name or that was a variable that we were using for this object so this could even be like uh, input and this would still work because we're passing in this instance of in through here um, and hold on one moment guys Sorry about that guys, had to get some water, clear my throat, and think about what I was going to say. But uh, what I was getting at is we want to use this input right here, and rather than setting it to A here, we're going to do input.next, and next is going to return a string, so this isn't going to work. But next has a couple properties of it that we can use. And after these parentheses right here, if we hit dot again, it's going to give us um, it's going to give us other methods that we can use that like will make that will make this a little bit more uh, functional to us. That will make it more useful. So you'll see how this first one here at the top says character at int index. That's actually what we're going to be using because we want this to return a character. It says it over on the right hand side that it's going to return a character and the position of uh, where it's at. So we want to do ch character at, and we want this to be zero because we always want it to be the first the first uh, letter that's typed in. If someone types in like A, B right next to each other, uh, and we didn't have, and we put like uh, char at one, it would do, uh, it would do B, it wouldn't do A. So we want this to be zero, and like I was saying uh, with the array here, we start at zero, and that's what they're doing as well when they bring in the string. So the uh, the first character in the string is zero. Um, yeah. <coughs> so this right here is going to be how we store each of the variable for grades, and. If we wanted to verify this, and I'm going to run this program, and I think that's where I'll end it because we're running at 10 minutes. If we create a string and we're just like, uh, 
variable stored at and then we put grades of x um, it's going to tell us what the variable is right here it's going to go in through grades and it's going to store it for uh, and it's going to it's going to store the va the variable for grades and it's going to tell us that it's stored at a specific uh, specific location um, variable stored. This isn't at, this is is, because this is going to give us what the value at this position is, not the not the index. So, so if we run this, how many classes are we averaging? Uh, let's just do four, make it easy. And what grade do you have in your classes? Now, the cool thing about next and this for loop is, it'll, I'll show you first. I'll show you the simplest point first. So let's just say uh, let's just say our first one is A. So we got an A in our first class out of our four classes. So we had variable stored is A. And then it's going to say, alright, what's the next one? So we can make this B. So we got a B in our next class. Sure. We have two more classes. We don't have to hit enter between there because we're using next. The space, the space that we put between characters or between strings is what's going to uh, is what's going to be the ending of next uh -oh. output. Okay, cool. Um, so we can actually put C space D. Variable stored is C, and variable stored is D. So you don't necessarily need to put enter right beforehand. You can put both of them next to it, and because you've already uh, told it what the next input is going to be, it's going to store it as that one as well. So we are out of time for this video. Uh, in the next video, um, we're going to clean this up a little bit and we're going to hopefully start our new function of just averaging everything out. So I'll see you guys in the next video.